Hey everyone, welcome back to the Super AR Show. Now, for today's episode, we're going to finally reveal our favourite superhero movies of all time. Have we not already done that? Well, by virtue of talking about superhero movies okay. every week for the last three years, we might have covered it in some sense. But this is the definitive one. Okay, this is it. This is gospel. This is canon. Yep. Um, who's going first? I'll go first. You go first? I'll go back Sweet. to the beginning. Oh. Uh, this is one that was on both of our lists, so I, 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 I won out. <coughs> but uh, Richard Donner's Superman. Masterpiece. Not a perfect film. No. But it was the first one. It made you believe a man could fly. It introduced the world to Christopher Reeve and one of the great superhero performances of all time. And it came out the year I was born. So it's something I've grown up with. It was on the telly as soon as I, as, as soon as I can remember watching telly. And it, you know, I had it on video and I watched it over and over and over again. And it's just a really special film in my heart. I think the first half is better than the second half. It's quite, it, it, when you watch it again, you realise how long it is. Because really when you watch it as a kid, you probably watch, you watch movies in part, don't you? You like tune out, you play, and then you go yeah. back to the action bits. But it's actually quite an epic film. Yeah, and it's a bit of a mess. It's a bit all over the place. I mean, I hate the, the romantic flying sequence. Um, I hate Otis. I really don't believe that Lex Luthor would have someone that stupid working for him. Yeah, if he's yeah, the greatest. a better hiring policy. <laughs> But there's just something really magical about that film yeah. that, uh, you know, uh, I, I, we, since we've been doing this show, we, we've talked about it and we see criticism from people that are maybe much younger than us who have just found it and said it's slow and it's boring. But it was a different time, it was a different era and it was, it was the first of its kind. And yeah, I mean, the superhero movie is very different now to how it was then. Yeah. But there's just, there's just something magic there's in that movie. There's a sense of scale with it. And like we've talked about it in the, the show, like one of the most traumatic moments as a kid as well, when it's, it's when Pa Kent passes away. Yeah. Like it's a really powerful moment when you're a kid to see that, and it kind of introduces this idea of death and Superman yeah. is helpless. And yeah, that always like profoundly affected me as well. I was torn between that one and Tim Burton Superman, uh, Batman, because that really meant a lot to me as well when I was 11 years old when it came out and saw it three times. And but I had to pick between the two, and I think Superman's the one that I'll be. Always watch. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's dated as badly as as, as Burton's yeah. Batman has, and and Christopher Reeve is still Superman. Yeah, yeah, he always will be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my first. This is not really in any order. No. Um, but Good. I'm going to go do mine chronological order. It is okay. um, yeah. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man Two. So it was kind of like after the first wave, if you want to go in those terms of Superman and Batman, even though they were far apart. It, this was but pre kind of Marvel and the kind of explosion. This mm -hmm. was like what got it started again. Yeah. And it was just the most excited fi exciting film I've ever seen. Yeah. Now, I watched Spider-Man 1 um, the week after I finished my GCSEs, and this was two years later, and I was about to go to university, and I remember watching it with my mum in the cinema, and midway through, because I obviously just caned like a bucket of coke, <laughs> midway through, I was busting for the loo, but I didn't want to miss a second of it. Yeah, and by the end, pants. I was almost pants. by the end, I was almost having renal failure. <laughs> like, I was like actually in physical pain, but I didn't want to miss any of it because no. it is spectacular to use a word that associated yes. with Spider-Man, but it is, and it's the one where like Raimi does the most Raimi stuff in it, like the Doc Ock origin yeah. sequence. It's like it is reminiscent of Evil Dead. It's got great hero moments, like when he catches a car and you see how strong Spider-Man really is. He, Mary Jane finds out who he is. There's just so many great moments yeah. in it, and there's a real lightness to it, there's a darkness to it, and there's a sense of fun, and he gets through so much in that movie. It's yeah, a perfect it's, superhero yeah. movie. And, you know, I always go on about, you need a great villain. Alfred, Alfred Molina. Molina. It was a brilliant and not an obvious choice. Not, yeah. a big, not a big star. Not someone that's going to get people into the cinema, but the right man for the right role. Yeah, and there's oh, so many good sequences. Just thinking about it, like when they're fighting up the side of the building and the camera and gravity, your perspective is changing. And the train sequence is probably still one of the best action sequences in any of these movies yep. for me. And it's a superhero movie. I love a bit of Christ symbolism as well. So that's just me. So it's got all my favourite things in Chris. Yeah. And I think it's still great. Yeah. It, you're making me want to watch it again. Yeah. Uh, my next one. Maybe we should do the next ones together. Ooh, are they a pair? Kind of, okay. yeah. So I'm going for Dark Knight and you're going for... Batman Begins. So maybe you should start talking, really, yeah, because they're... 
if we're going to do it chronologically. <laughs> like, with all films, I, I saw some like points in my life. So um, yeah, we saw this uh, first year at university, and really excited about it. I really like Christopher Nolan's uh, previous movie, Memento. I was wondering what he was going to do with this big like blockbuster, and I just still think that's one of my favorite. It is my favorite origin story mm. because. Batman is very much the focus of that movie. The villains are kind of supportive of the story that Batman goes on. It's all about fear and overcoming fear. They have the right villain to tell that story, which is something I always say on this show. You pick the villain depending on what kind of aspect of the hero you want to tease out sure. and explore. Perfect villain for that. And it was just, a, it just was so good. Like, yeah. he, once it, he elevated that genre and did something with it, and then he, still I think it's the marker for taking that route. You know, Snyder hasn't done it since, and he's failed quite spectacularly, to be honest. But, like, Nolan did it brilliantly first time out. Yeah, I think I think Batman Begins and then and then The Dark Knight kind of sh showed you the potential that these superhero movies could have because it was just a, it's such a different approach. You know, the, the Tim Burton's Batman was serious, but this was super serious. Mm. And yet, it never seemed ridiculous. Like, he, he grounded it in the real world, um, Set, I set things up superbly in the first film. I, the last sort of 20 minutes, half hour of Batman Begins, I don't like as much as the rest of the film. Mm. And so that's why I didn't pick it. But Dark Knight, then he took it to the next level with this villain as well, because the Joker is the best villain in all of mm. comics. Mm. Uh, you know, there was criticism of him casting Heath Ledger, but you know, it's just unforgettable what he did. Yeah, I, like, I remember at the end of Batman Begins, you tell how good the movie is sometimes by audience reaction, and British audiences are very different, much more kind of demure. Uh, they're not going to like clap and scream. At the end of Batman Begins, the screening I saw it at in Newcastle, when they turn over the card, and so people lost their minds. Yeah, like people went crazy. And and I genuinely think um, Nolan is the best director of action. I love the momentum, the build up, the the way he uses Hans Zimmer's music. There's so many action sequences in those, in all three films, to be honest, that are just so oh, much the better. The Hong than, Kong sequences. They're so much better than anything else anyone's doing. He's really good at doing like, like very legible action. You always know what's going on. You know yeah. where who yeah. everyone is and where they all are and what the point of it is. Yeah. Where it's not just this kind of shaky cam. It's like a free for all. Oh, they're so good. They're, they're so, and, and and he was tackling real world issues and problems via these comic books, uh, movies, you know? It was, he, I just... But, in, but what's good about that? Like, he has that, but he also... Prim he's still doing the superhero thing. Yeah. It's not like that shoveled on top, and it's like, it breaks under, like, oh, this is really an allegory for this. It's like, that's there if you want it, but don't worry about it, because I've still made a kick-ass Batman movie. Yeah. That you can enjoy purely as a Batman movie, and it's there on its own terms as well. I feel like they probably are one and two, in terms of the greatest. Yeah. He's, he's too good, isn't he? He is. That's why he's going to make war movies. Apart from, apart from, <laughs> apart from the we, third one. We were both very positive when that came out, and I still really enjoyed seeing that cinema, and I still don't mind quite a lot of it. It's all right. Anyway. Uh, my final choice is Kick-Ass, predictably. I'm just a big Kick-Ass fan. Yeah. Uh, I just think it's a really... It captures the fun of being a superhero. It... It manages to poke fun at the genre while at the same time paying homage to it and being a good superhero movie in its own right. I think um, Aaron Taylor Johnson's great in the lead role. I think Mark Strong's a really fun villain. Hit Girl's one of the best characters of the last few years introduced in film, I think. Just sort of so unexpected and so out there, outlandish. Uh, and again, I think Matthew Vaughan's a really, really good director. Oh, he's great, yeah. Uh, in terms of action and drama and romance, like, you know, he, he can make you. He can make you. He can have you laughing at the characters one second, and then have you really quite moved the next. And uh, I think, yeah, the way the, the tone of that movie, I think that's a really hard thing. What he managed to do that 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 film doesn't seem weirdly violent or like a just a piss take at some points. Like he manages to maintain sort of a level tone that really works. Mm, like. It's the, it's, the, it's the great superhero film if you yourself like superheroes because it's this great fantasy, like, what if? Yeah. Because I remember being a kid and wanting to be a superhero and even writing a letter to my local police constabulary <laughs> saying that I would do it if they would fund me. <laughs> Didn't come through. 
I said all I needed was a mini motorbike. It's a missed opportunity. <laughs> all I needed was a mini motorbike yeah, only. Yeah. Um, but oh, like, I want to make that happen for you now. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. I'm over it. I've got. I could buy my own motorbike. <laughs> Not gonna happen. I'm too scared of them. Easy money bags. Oh, this is the scary. Um, yeah, it's such a brilliant film. Nick Cage is fun, but yeah, like the scene. Oh, the, the scene where Hit Girl shows up is amazing. The scene when she's saving Child. Big Daddy's life. What? I love that. I've watched that scene so many it times. It makes me tear up quite a lot. Yeah, I think we we did our favourite most emotional scene. moments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I'm just a big Kickass fan. Shame about Kickass too, though. Big <laughs> Uh, my final choice is the most recent one that we've picked, and it is Captain America Civil War. Now, I'm not, we've talked about this recently, so I'm not going to spend too long on it. It's just, it's the culmination. It's the film that brings to life what a comic book is, comic books I read as a kid, and the fun I had with them, which were just like all these characters that I loved, that I had individual attachments to because I read their own stories, and they come together for this big spectacle, and it looks amazing, it's funny, it's exciting, and they did it. And they had a lightness of touch because in comics, you can't you can't have loads of dialogue because you've got to you know keep it going. You've limited to word bubbles, and everyone just gets a line and a line that conveys character, and that's what comics do. The best comics do really well. Mm. It's one line. You know something about that character, their motivation, and it does that throughout the movie. And I just think it's brilliant. Yeah, that's the film I liked more the second time I watched it. I, I thought it was really good. Yeah. Second time when you really when you really. Concentrating on what they're actually doing. It's a really smart, clever film. Yeah, it's excellent. So that's it. That's canon. Yeah, I didn't, what... I didn't pick any Marvel, even though I'm a Marvel fanboy, I guess. Well, there you go. <laughs> right. 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 Feedback. You're going first. Am I? All right. This is from George, who says, Another great show by Marvel. Uh, in reference to Luke Cage. Yeah. Um, I thought they handled the cop race issue evenly and balanced with lines like, Bulletproof will always be second to being black and get your Sharpton on or they hate us until they need us. Uh, but he says the worst line was what you're talking about, Willis. Uh, it took him right out of the moment. It was a bad line. How many people do you think get that reference? Quite a few. You reckon? I wonder if people just think it's just him being really, just really <laughs> blunt. <laughs> it's, like, it's a terrible line of dialogue. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? This is a good bit of feedback. And it's titled Cultural Divide. This uh -oh. is from Langley M. Neely, who's okay. written to the show loads. Firstly, I have to respectfully disagree with some of your analysis of Luke Cage. He goes on to make some good points here. I thought it was great. For me, the strength of the series is in the acting and the characters themselves and the difference in tone that you guys found jarring. For instance, you mentioned that the villains were weak for not having some overarching Bond villain-like plan, which is something too many superhero tales include for no reason other than it is expected. I found the idea that Cottonmouth is content to run his criminal empire and not make waves a wonderful parallel to Luke Cage, attempting to do the same thing and become an invisible man. It's outside forces and fateful circumstance, mm. Pop's death, that forces both men into each other's lives and kind of precipitates the events. He then goes on to say, after watching your past review and feedback on the show, I'm curious if a major disconnect for you is cultural. By that, I mean most of the negative feedback you all read came from outside the United States. I wonder if the show's theme seemed heavy handed to you because of your outside perspective. I generally don't know if that's a valid point or not, which is why I'm asking. I thoroughly enjoyed Luke Cage, but I am willing to ask. Being a black man in America, does my own in intimacy with the themes and nature of the show make me appreciate it more or cloud my judgment to its flaws? I honestly don't know. And what I would say on that mm. is That's who you are defines your interaction mm. with all films and TV and video games, and that's why you like something more. And, you know, Chris and I are obviously not black American men. Speak that's for yourself, like, buddy. Um, and obviously we necessarily see it from a different perspective. We have less connection to certain themes and certain issues, yep. even though we can interact with them and appreciate them. But I wouldn't say, like, it's not a case of being objective or having the right interpretation. If you enjoyed it, it's obviously had some connection with you. I thought, and I think we said some of the race stuff and some of the police stuff, or some of the, the yeah. best stuff in it, but, but um, as he says, some of it did feel a little bit heavy-handed. But it was good to see it, man. And, yeah. and to get that in a really fun entertainment show, it was pretty impressive. Yeah, it's a good email. Thank you, Langley. Yeah, great email. Uh, this is from Peter Dawson, who says, um, I agree that all these Marvel Netflix shows suffer from certain <coughs> recurring issues. I do have a disagree with your assessment of their success rate in these issues. Jessica Jones is the most committed to serious drama. It offers nuanced insight into gender relations and toxic relationships. 
Uh, Luke Cage is largely, largely successful in offering a crime drama with insight into contemporary race issues, but I also would argue that it is the most fun of the shows. Um, Daredevil, as good as it is, or at least seemed by virtue of being first, is the weakest of the bunch, the second season being lesser because of its falling into incoherence towards the end. Both seasons really struggle to rectify the down-to-earth stuff with the supernatural elements because they are so distant. So he's almost inverted our list a little bit. Yeah. There. Like, I do agree. Like, when Luke Cage is fun, it's the funnest of all the shows. Yeah. Like, um, when I interviewed the director, he called, he referred to Luke Cage's fighting style as smack foo. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, it's like, no one can hurt him. So you might as well have fun with those sequences, and they're not particularly choreographed. Um... I, well, I think we said they were much for muchness. That order could have changed easily, couldn't it? It happened to be the one we both yeah. agreed on without even discussing it, but um, we both picked. But I thought it's... And, and actually, I do agree. I think with Daredevil Season 2, the one we picked is our favourite. I think maybe I'm looking at it with rose-tinted spectacles and I'm remembering I remember all the good stuff, which was the best stuff of all of them. But yeah, the last few episodes weren't great. The last yeah. episode was not a winner. So... I'll have to redo that then. <laughs> Um, but like, I think his point is interesting as well about them reconciling the kind of more grounded approach with the, what they're doing is fundamentally supernatural subject matter. These people have superpowers. Yeah. It's by definition supernatural. And it looks like, even on a trailer from New York Comic Con, that Iron Fist is, might be the most supernatural of all of them, or most mm -hmm. explicitly so. So it'll be interesting to see how they tackle that. Um, this is from. They Al make the supernatural natural. That's what they do. But there's no supernatural anymore. Mm. Uh, this is from Al Patrickson. What do you think of what? What do you think of the final Wolverine movie, The Logan? So over the weekend, we got the kind of mm -hmm. announcement, the poster, the fact that it's called Logan. The rumours for a long time that it's going to be an adaptation of Old Man Logan, the Mark Miller um, graphic novel. Yep. What do you think about it? The direction. Like they said, it's going to be profoundly different to the last one. I'm up for it. I feel like they're always saying this about well, the Wolverine standalone <laughs> yeah. movies. Yeah. Like, even from Origins, they're like, it's, it's different, he's on his own, it's going to be like darker and grittier and more like, and then obviously we had all the failed versions. I thought Wol Wolverine 2, the Wolverine was meant to be that. Yeah, which I didn't rate as much as everyone else did. I fell asleep I it. was all right. Um, well, I think the character deserves to have a good swan song. Yeah. It would be great to see a really emotionally impactful Wolverine movie that I feel like the characters earn and Hugh Jackman's earn and I really like to see it go up on like, a high but we know barely more than you like do as an, as an actor like he's fully capable of doing something brilliant with the character if given the right material and I hope because it's the last one with him they just take the shackles off and just go to go for it and yeah. do something really brave with it R-rated R-rated never gonna happen um, musical Anthony Garza has written in to say, uh, with Superman being cast in Supergirl and eventually Batman being in Gotham, do you think we are getting close to having a Justice League live action TV series? No. I, I don't think they'll ever do that. Because I think they're happy to have all the characters, but too weird and confusing to have them all together. Yeah. Not, not, not anytime soon. Yeah. Not in this cycle. This is a final email from Ben in Wisconsin. This is something we've talked about. I think it's worth raising, because uh -oh. I think a lot of people are confused about this. I watched Captain America Civil War, and was wondering if you noticed that the same woman that Mariah <laughs> Dillard, Alfred Woodard, in Luke Cage, actually plays a different woman in Silver, Civil War. In Civil War, she's that woman who shows Tony Stark a picture of her son, that she accuses him and the Avengers of killing in Sokovia after his presentation of that memory device. <laughs> I'm surprised Marvel Studios would cast the same woman to tell you two different characters in the same universe. Maybe it's her twill, lol. <laughs> yeah, I think we, we said this before this. on the show that maybe it makes us think that the uh, they're not really communicating with each other very well yeah, over I, there. This is the whole thing, like, and I don't think it's necessarily any enmity. Like, they're all really busy making these big things, and I think the they are separated. I just don't think they're coordinating, and she's a very good actress. And she just kept stum. <laughs> yes, she was like, you know what, I've got these two parts. If I tell them I'm going to lose one. <laughs> Just gonna keep quiet and they won't know. Yeah. Or they just maybe they like maybe we're reading too much of this. Maybe they just thought she was great for both roles. I mean, so actually, it's fine. We've it doesn't matter. We, we've we're all grown up, so we can figure it out. We recast Hulk. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Get Edward Norton in to play it. Um, very versatile actor. Cool. So that was the final piece of email um, feedback this week, and also it's the final piece of email feedback for the Super Show. So I'm gonna break it to you. 
this is going to be the last episode of the Super Show that we do. That's why we went out with the kind of non-topical topic of our favourites, because we want to tell you what our favourite superhero movies were. Yeah, this is show 150 as well. This is, so we're ending here, and the reason is you're going to leave us. Yeah, I'm leaving IGN, very sadly, with a heavy heart after nine years. and I think this is the thing I'm going to miss the most. If yeah, so, all honesty, doing yeah. show. so we've done this show for like three years. If you go back and look at episode one, we had this really weird digital set. It looks terrible. It looks like we're on Nigerian television. I'm really glad. <laughs> What's wrong with Nigerian television? But, lot, but they use a lot of digital sets. Okay. That are kind of. I need to watch this now. I can't even remember what yeah, we did. Yeah, do you in remember this? One. No. Because we also experimented with um, some of the the sets on the TriCaster, and they are literally using Nigerian television. We found them on YouTube. <laughs> So I'm glad we went to this instead. I think it's got more character. Yeah, and I don't know. Maybe we'll, I'd love to come back and do one yeah, at the end of the year. You, maybe it, if I'm allowed to by my new if, employers. If you're on your new job, like I'm going to miss you very much, and I love doing this. But if you start doing superior weekly, <laughs> I'm going to sue the hell out of you. I, I actually do want to do something like superior this. Superior weekly. I'm, gonna, I'm getting um, legal on you. So before we go, before we go, I'm going to yeah. do. Um, here are my top three superhero show moments. Number one is when we started a show and you had a bag on your head. Because <laughs> you don't get that on other IGN and it, shows. Do you know what the bag said? Yep. What did it say? It, it said, I am, I am not Frank LaBeouf. I am not Frank LaBeouf. Yep. Not many people will get that one. <laughs> that reference is dated well. <laughs> Um, second favourite moment is um, when you revealed the most kind of traumatic moment that you've ever had in the cinema while dressed as kick-ass and I nearly choked on some tea. <laughs> that is funny. But uh, maybe, maybe uh, Dale can flash that one And up. my uh, final favourite superhero show moment is after we filmed an episode, we realised we'd done that episode before. <laughs> We had to work out another title to call it that was still interesting, but kind of masked the mistake that we'd done the same topic twice and picked different entries. <laughs> and no one noticed, though. No I don't think anyone, we were like, if we no, put this, it's fine. do we re-record, do we do a different show, or Absolutely do we just put it fine. up and hope no one noticed? People loved it. People loved it. Um, we could have done that the last 150 weeks, just kept playing that first show with different titles. Um, but yeah, I have genuinely loved doing the show. It's been a pleasure. I'm going to give you a hug. Oh, man. No, you're going to make me sad. And I More say, importantly, thanks to everyone that's watched, yeah. everyone that's written in. It's been so nice doing this show because we get a lot of negative comments and a lot of negative emails doing this job. Yeah. And with the superhero show, it's just all been positive, apart from Batman v Superman around that release. Oh, we're like absolutely sidestepping but that. E- but even then, it was all really constructive. Like we weren't getting slagged off. It's just nah. people disagreed with our yeah, opinion on that. Yeah, and that's what this show is always about. It's just about chatting about stuff that we loved, that we cover every day for work, that people watch at home. And yep. we just wanted to talk about it in an interesting way. And that's what this was all about. So thank you for watching. Yeah. If you watched one episode, or if you've been with us for nearly three years. So, for all your superhero news, stay with us on IGN, and, but for us, yeah. for now, goodbye. Farewell. Hello, like, welcome to the last one of these f***ers. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I just feel extra nervous about it. Yeah, I feel a bit weird. And until then, uh, farewell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why did I do that? And until next week, hopefully, less superhero news happens. See you then. <laughs> that was well time. <laughs> what was that? He was doing his own thing. And he prided freedom above everything else. Oh, no. But free advertising for the hut. What's he doing back there? <laughs> he's, he's hungry. <laughs> We'll do that one week, no, though. That's skits. Start the show and I'll pretend to Do you like so. skits? You've come to the right place you for like, skits. Do you like bants with a Z? <laughs> if, if so, f*** off. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want your type around <laughs> here. Imagine that style of the video. I'm subscribing to that, right? Away. Mm. Good. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a lovely bit of level there. Okay.